Okay. Oh my. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, the world we live in right now. I'm so I know. About that. I know. It's okay. I'm sweating here, but um, uh, I'm I'm okay. You're you're here now, so uh, make sure you were awake. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Welcome um, to tap into your creativity, Stacy. I am so happy and excited that you are part of my army of artists. And you are so generous with your time and your knowledge. And um, I know we just got to meet each other, but I, I adore you and uh, you're just um, a kindred soul for me. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Sandra. I really appreciate it. And thank you for all that you do. I've just loved watching all these interviews and and just the whole project that you're doing is just so amazing. So I'm honored to be part of it. Thank you. Well, um, so um, let's just dive in right away since we, <laughs> since, since we had a couple of scares there. Yes. Um, Sorry. So... <laughs> Make sure my volume is up so I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Here. So where are you, Stacey, right now? Um, I'm in Salt Lake City. i Okay. Been... I was in Park City. I lived in Park City in Utah, uh, Park City, Utah for about 27 years. And I moved down here about uh, 10 or 11 years ago now. So what I have behind me is very familiar to you, right? Very, well, it is now um, after last night. Yeah, we finally, I mean, it's been such a warm fall, beautiful, but kind of scary. But we finally got, I think the mountains got about 20 inches last night. And oh, that's nice. We got around 12 inches here. Great. So um, feels beautiful today because the sun is out. So yeah. love that. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> it's okay, Stacey. So let's start from the beginning. Tell us a little bit about um, who Stacey is. Where were you born? Um, tell us a little bit about your childhood. Um, okay. I was born in Sacramento, California. And I only lived there for a couple of years. My father worked for Campbell Soup. So and um, it's, I wasn't an army brat, but I was a corporate brat. Um, I moved probably, I think I counted 49 times. Um, oh my goodness. I know it's a lot. Um, I went to eight different grade schools. So we moved all over the country, probably every year, year and a half. And then I landed in high school up in, um, New England in Connecticut, Reading, Connecticut for about four years. And lived in New England about 12 years and ended up in Utah in 86, I think. And then I've moved a lot since I've been here, Miami, Mexico, back and forth, but I keep ending up back here. Were you um, involved in arts at all? Were you creative at that time? Um, yes. So my, um, I've, I, I've always been you know, look back on it. I've always been attracted to creative world, but I never really had the language for that. My mom tells me when I was little, I'd always, I had two brothers and I'd come back with my pockets full of treasures, you know, and I was always gathering and putting things together. Uh, I had an art, uh, a, my art school teacher, Mr. Long was, um, I think he was really influential in just saying it really encouraging me. Uh, I, because I moved so much and my parents, my parents were supportive, but my father's a businessman. So it was, and I know this is a common story. You know, that's great that you want to do art, but what are you going to do to fall back on that kind of, that kind of story, um, which led me to get a business degree as well as an art degree in my undergrad. Um, so, and my, my grandmother was, uh, my grandmother on my father's side was a, an independent artist. She was part of the WPA. She was, uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. She was? Yeah. She would, she didn't live near me. She lived in California, but I saw her a lot and I was always really influenced by her. I think by more by her way of life than her actual work because she was yeah she did morale posters for during uh, WPA she had a business where she was uh, she was a graphic designer but she did everything by hand like all the little jewelry signs you know in the jewelry stores and big big signs for like um theaters opening up my dad used to help her do silk screens and oh my she, gosh 
she was like, she had, when she'd come to visit, she had a hat that matched every pair of shoes that matched every like purse. You know, she'd bring 22 pairs for two weeks and she loved to gamble. She loved to drink. She loved to cook. <laughs> so I think she was a huge influence on me. Wow. That, what a great story to have. Seriously. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, that's okay. I said, what a great story for you to have that. And what a great influence. Yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I think also in a way of, um, because she wasn't married at the time. And so it just showed me all kinds of different ways that you could, that you could live your life. Right, right. And that artist or the heart of an artist is very um, sacred. Yes. Indeed. So did you go to school? Did you go to school for art? I did. I went to, um, I went to Keene State in Southern New Hampshire and it wasn't very well thought out. I mean, I, I went there because it was an hour from Stratton where I used to be a ski bum and <laughs> uh, good priorities. Right. And they had, yeah. and they had just gotten a new art building. And so I got a liberal arts degree. And, uh, and then I got a, a minor, an associate's degree in graphic design and associate's degree in business. I didn't know uh, what it was to be an artist. I, I didn't know what that, what that meant or, or what, what the path was. Nobody, it's probably a good thing that nobody ever told me. Um, I just kind of made choices and decided, you know, along the way. So when I went to school, I was really focused. I, I did stained glass. I did drawing. I did sculpture. I did painting. Uh, and when I graduated, I went into graphic design because I didn't know any better. And I, I wasn't, it, I was, it was interesting. I wasn't on the creative, well, I was on the creative side of it, but I was more on the art, uh, account executive part of it. I have a pretty strong left and right brain um, as far as I like the business part of it. I like the marketing. I can go down that rabbit hole, but I have to consciously separate the two. Uh, so, but I learned a lot. I learned that I didn't want to be in graphic design. Um, and I was the go-between between between the artists and the clients. Um, and then I, so I got my bachelor's degree at Keene State and then I moved around a couple of times and I ended up in Utah and, and, and ended up getting, um, there was, had an opportunity, a woman that had a gallery up in Park City. She was selling her um, framing business and she also needed somebody to work for her. And so I, during the winter, I, at the time I was living in Atlanta, I got the job for her, with her. I broke up with my boyfriend, I quit my job, and I sold everything, and I moved to Utah. And I worked. Wow. Yeah. That was, that took some um, courage, I'm sure, to leave I, everything it, and just pack up and leave. I was used to doing that, though. You know, maybe that's true. not, and I'm not saying that's necessarily a good thing. Um, sometimes it turned out to be a good thing. Sometimes it didn't. Uh, but when it, that was a good thing. And I moved, I moved out here to Utah and I worked for her for about nine months. And then um, my father co-signed a loan for me and I bought her framing business and then turned that into a gallery, uh, the Flat Rabbit Gallery in Park City. And I had that for uh, almost nine years. So, I mean, I think that you were very um, smart that you were able to take business classes in school because a lot of artists that go into fine arts, um, there's not a lot of business. Um, now, I think it has changed a lot. I think that their um, education in the schools are showing marketing and business because we as artists, we need those skills. Yeah, oh, definitely. And, you know, I think that, I don't know how much I learned in business school because my father was a business is corporate. So I learned a lot from him in the conversation, but I, I did learn from in school for sure. I wish, you know, hindsight's 2020, but um, if it, it, 
I think that there should be more programs for artists to um, because, on how to run a business because you, it's a business. Even you don't want to think about it as a business because it's not really the romantic, se sexy part of it, right? Right. But, um, but if, well, I shouldn't say it is a business. If, for me, it's a business because it's my livelihood. Right. And, um, and so I think those are just practical things that you, you need to learn. And having the thing where I learn the most is having my gallery, having six people work for me. I learned what I didn't want to do. Um, in fact, the reason I sold the gallery in 1993 is because I didn't want to be working and turn, you know, turn 65 and allow myself to, to make art. And not that there's anything wrong with that, and that path probably would have put me in a better financial situation. Um, but there's no way I could have had the experience that I've had and I wouldn't do it any other way. But I sold the gallery and um, I, uh, I started taking classes. I didn't even know what I wanted to do. Uh, I went back into jewelry and uh, started taking some sculpture classes and it discovered clay and then went down that rabbit hole for a But before we go there, the, the oh, sure. clay, the, before we go there, so in 93, you decide to close a gallery and then you're like, okay, I want to be now a professional artist. This is what I want to do. I learned what I needed to learn from my gallery. And how do you make that commitment and how do you leave that financial income to become now an independent artist? Did you have people that were already looking at your artwork and buying your artwork at the time? No, I wasn't making any work. I had a gal, I had the gallery in the business. All I was concerned is making that, you know, float. Um, I never really made a bunch of money. I made, in, I made, made enough money to live on and to float the gallery. And, um, but uh, at the time I was, what I was going to do is just get a job and find out what I was, what I was interested in. I didn't, um, I didn't say I was going to be a professional artist. I just knew, I didn't know what it looked like, but I just knew that I wanted to be making my work and I would rather be working for somebody else and exploring that. And at the time I was with um, my, uh, a partner who was very supportive and, um, and we could afford, um, well, he could afford and he was very supportive to kind of help me get on my feet and take some classes and and that's what started my my uh, my adventure into ceramics um, and I wanted to do and and you know it's a lot of decision making like do I want to do cer ceramics do you want to do high fire or low fire do you want to do functional or do you want to do um, uh, sculptural you know it's the same thing with with painting so I just kept my head down and I worked uh, and followed my followed my my desires. I ended up taking about a year of courses at university. And then I started going to Anderson Ranch and taking, which is, I don't know if you know about Anderson Ranch, but it is in Snowmass, Colorado. It's a fabulous place. Um, and it was started by Paul, Paul Soldner. And there's a lot of very strong ceramic department and printmaking and sculpture. And I started taking workshops, like wh whatever I was interested in, um, I was following. Are them. they residencies or are they workshops? Or They're workshops. Are... They do have residencies. And I actually ended up, do so I took a lot of those workshops and then I ended up applying and got into, it did a residency in, in the fall, see, winter of 2010, I think, 2009. It was the first. It was the first residency they had that was completely funded. It was for three months, completely funded. Wow. Oh my gosh! I lived there. I'm jealous just listening to this. Oh, it was such a great experience, and they they just support their artists. So we had visiting artists. In fact, Sanford Briggers was one of the um, one of the visiting artists, oh and. My God. and it oh. was, uh, and all I did was I worked in ceramics and printmaking. And for three months and just had the freedom to do that with the, with wow. the support of the ranch. But my backing up a little bit, um, well, maybe it's not backing up. I kind of forget which, what happened first. But um, uh, did you want to know about graduate school? Yeah. Oh, you went back after? Well, I, went, I ended up going to graduate school in 19, 
it, 19, no, not 19, in, I think it was 1999. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, so after the gallery. Wow. Yeah, I was 37 and I was, uh, I, it was after the gallery and I had, I got into our um, graduate school at University of Miami, full ride. And I picked up, packed everything up, put 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 my store, my studio in storage, and I went down there and studied for a year. It was a great experience, but it also told me, like I find a lot of things in my life, told me what I didn't want to do. At thirty-seven, um, I I I wanted to go and make work, and I just had some conflicts there, uh, so I ended up. I, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't want to focus on being a teacher. I wanted to focus on my work. And I wasn't sure I was still exploring what that was. And uh, I ended up leaving there and then going to doing a semester at Utah State with John Neely, which was great. And then I, I just took a sabbatical. I, after a year and a half, I was like, you know, it's like you go down this path because you want to do this and you make it all happen and it's happening. And then you have to stop. I, I had to stop and say, is this the right thing that I want to do? And I just took a breather and I moved to Mexico for three months. Well, actually, I went for a month and stayed for three months. And I made more work there during that three months than I did a year and a half of graduate school. I think you just said something very valuable here because, um, you know, as artists, we expect to create all the time or to be in the studio all the time. And it's okay to give ourselves breathing time and space and pivot and change directions. And it's okay. We are sometimes so hard on ourselves. Um, I can tell you I am. And um, it's nice to have that space. It brings you a perspective that maybe if you're in it all the time, you don't have it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, you know, Twyla Tharp, it's in, in her book on creativity, calls it scratching. And I love that. Um, I love that. Yeah, me too. It's a, it's a great book if you, haven't, if you haven't read it. And it's on the process of creativity. I love those kind of... Can you repeat the title for someone yeah, that didn't hear? Yeah, um, sorry, I keep hitting my screen. It keeps going dark. Um, oh. I have it in the other room. I'll show it to you. It's okay, perfect. I, Tharp, Twyla Tharp on uh, her process on creativity. Okay. It doesn't matter whether it's drawing or painting, um, um, whatever your where your medium is. But the okay. idea of, of, of she might have meant it a little differently, but scratching like that time of gathering, you know, um, and gathering thoughts and 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 really paying attention to to the direction you're going and, and if that is truly what fills your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing morning pages. <laughs> okay. And that helps too. I sure. have to say, um, meditating and doing that. It just, it, it helps you just, um, bring some space in your head, mm -hmm. um, for, and, and make an intention for the day and hopefully will be a meaningful one. So, yeah, definitely. I, I got into, um, I got into a stretch when I came back from, from Mexico. Um, I wanted to share this with you. I'm backing up a little bit, but it's, but it's all connected. Um, when I came back from Mexico, well, I was in Mexico and I was trying to decide whether to go back to graduate school or not, like what direction I wanted to go. And it gave me just what we're talking about. It gave me clarity that I had everything I needed to be a working artist. Like I was like, what do I want to do? I want to be a working artist in my studio, paying my light bills. And I realized it gave me clarity that I had everything that I needed. I didn't need to go to graduate school. What I needed is I needed a studio and I needed to believe in myself. So I came back to Utah and I called a friend, I got a studio and I just started working. And I put a body of work in ceramics and I put a body of work together and I, I got into an art festival up in Sun Valley. And I, and putting a body of work together is a great opportunity to approach galleries. So I reached out to a gallery that I was interested in in Park City and invited the director before I went to the show to come see the body of work. And her director for her New York gallery happened to be in town 
and they came to my house. They saw the body of work and I was interested obviously in, in them representing me. And she said, well, what about if we buy the whole show? And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> unbelievable. Seriously, unbelievable beyond. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't have, I couldn't have planned that. I couldn't have, you know, I was following my, I was following my path of what I thought, you know, what I wanted to do. And that was um, uh, Connie Katz, who owned the Coda Gallery that is now the Trove Gallery here in Park City. And they also owned, at the time, the Coda Gallery in Chelsea and the Coda Gallery in Palm Desert. And she bought the body. I went and did the show. She bought the body of work. And they started representing me. And the next nine years, I had two shows a year with them in New York, in Palm Desert, in Park City. Uh, they still represent me after 20 years. It's incredible. Seriously, <laughs> it's one of those like amazing stories where the gallery believes in you, loves you, and represents you in the way that you would represent yourself. And that is something to say about a gallery. If you're looking to find a gallery to work with, this, this, it needs to be a both, it, it needs to be two way street. Like it needs to work for you, but it also needs to work for them. It's a partnership. It is, it's, and I think that the combination of having them represent me and also me having my gallery for eight, nine years before that, I was on the end where I knew what I expected from my artists and what the represent, what the artist's responsibility was. So I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty active with, you know, checking in with the gallery, making sure you have conversations with the gallery. I also happen to know, I mean, I've been with Trove and Coda for 20 years and they're both, I can't recommend them enough as far as like putting their artists first. And, and, but it's a, it's a, it's you have to represent yourself it's in so what would you do differently now because you were very lucky at that time that they came and you know the director of new york was there i mean it all had like the stars aligned for you right but for someone who's looking for representation right now what would you say to them how would you approach a gallery today well i was i, I would say that first of all i was lucky but that never would have happened if I wouldn't have made the call. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and I really believe in, if I was to tell my 17 year old self something, I would say, believe in yourself and ask for it. Because if you don't ask for it, nobody is sitting there saying, huh, I wonder if she wants me to represent her. I mean, of course, sometimes that's, you know, that's the way it happens, but there's no set rule. Um, and, and times are different now. I mean, I, but, but I would still do that. I've got a show. Um, I just booked a show with Trove Gallery in February of 2023 solo show. And I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to do that show for Jen at the Coda. I mean, excuse me, Trove, but I will use that to, um, put a body of work together too. So I would, I would say to one, research the gallery make sure that your work would fit in there. You know, it, it's, it's um, make sure your work would fit, make sure you like who they're representing. You don't have to like all of it, um, but contact the artists, talk about, you know, if, if those, if the gallery owners are, are reputable, how long they've been in business. You know, I've been really, I have been lucky with that, um, but I, I know some horror stories, which, which, which I'm sure other artists do too. Um, yep. You know, so that's what I would say. I'd say, I would say, be upfront, be communicate, communicate. And, um, you know, now like putting together a book of your work and approaching galleries, you know, sending those in the mail, um, um, introduce yourself, you know, make yourself, make yourself different, be, be personal. Yes. Especially and the key is, I think, having a body of work. Yes. A body of work that is available and ready to go. Because, you know, right. if you're sending them something that you already sold or it's not available, well, that's not going to work. And that's tricky because, you know, you put a body of work together for a show and you're spending the money to put that, you know, to document it. You don't want it just sitting in your studio, but you do have to make sure that it's available. You don't want to say, no, that's, you know, that isn't available. Um, right. So, and also I think like, I'm interested in getting a couple more galleries to represent me. 
for my paintings. But right now I'm not approaching anybody because I'm in a scratching stage. I'm, 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 I have this show in a year um, and I've got three, four months of my uh, CVP with Nicholas. So I'm going to be busy with that. So, so we need, we need to talk about that. So okay. we're going to come back and sit down and finish our conversation. But right now, um, take us on a beautiful tour of your incredible studio. You guys are in for a treat. We're going to see two studios. And so um, if you want to take your phone and switch the camera, you're going to see the two arrows in the, in the middle, I think, of the, your screen. Okay. Um, Let's see. There we go. Awesome. Perfect. Great. So much technical. Okay. And I don't want to put my hand over the microphone. So exactly. I can hear you just fine. Okay. Perfect. Good. Yep. And yep. So my studio is uh, in, at the Poor Yorick and it is a friend of mine's space. We have uh, 50, 50 artist spaces here. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, I had three three studios, but now I have two. I have a painting studio. I don't know what oh. you. I have a. Um, wow. Yeah. So this is a this is a piece that I did. Uh, you have Krista Harris on next week, right? Yes, I do. My buddy Krista. So um, she is one of my favorite people on the planet. Mine and too. I took this workshop with her in uh, in Santa Fe at Beverly Todd's studio. If you don't know about that studio, check it out. And, uh, and this is a piece that I did at Krista's that was uh, to a playlist. And I Wow, did I love that. The I energy and the mark making here is incredible. Thank you. I had so much fun doing it. And, and it and, looks like you didn't think you just went no. and you were like dancing with the I mean, it just you can feel the beat in it. I did. I just responded to the music and I did it on paper. And what I did was I mounted it on three quarter inch plywood and oh, wow. it, it's mounted. Let's see if I can show you it's mounted so that it floats from the wall. I love that. Yeah, How I... were you able to mount such a big piece? What did you use? I used golden soft gel gloss and okay. I, I wasn't doing anything else and wow. I put the soft gel gloss down on the board and then I um I just worked it from the amazing inside. this how is big a, is that piece this piece is 36 by it was 36 by 60 and it's 36 by 48 now wow I love that Stacy. Thank you. This is another piece I've been doing. Um, so I'm really interested in, in, in um, movement and responding to music. Uh, and so I've been putting together playlists and having friends send playlists to me and then, um, and then painting to those. So this is one that a friend of mine sent me a playlist and I painted to it and then and it's on paper and then I'm going to do the same thing and mount it on um mount it on wood see I see on that piece I see it's like a forest and there's like some water coming in the middle it's just so bizarre but that's what I'm looking at like trees yeah um, depth in that piece too and I was just responding just responding to the music but I really believe in the history of you know what we bring to our work um, that is the subconscious and uh, subconscious, you know, you're the, I, I, I like the dance between the intuitive and, 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 um, and intention, you know, where um, you just respond and then you step back and do a little bit of analysis. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I, I really, I like the textures that you use. And for people that don't know, Stacy is, um, a representative of Golden, and she is, um, you are a working artist for them, and you teach workshops, and um, what else do you do? You do everything. Look at that. Look at that spread. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, this is like my favorite part, you guys. Like, seriously, her materials are to die for. It, it's, I'm really, I'm a material junkie, for sure. I mean, that's what I do for 
I'm, I'm bouncing back and forth, but that's what I do with um, Nicholas Wilton for Art to Life um, and CVP is I, um, I kind of focus on materials. I've, and, you know, that's, that's another thing. I've just always loved materials, and I didn't consciously think about that. I just followed what I was interested in. And by taking all those workshops and doing different processes, um, I've gathered a lot of, of information on, on technique. Those are Williamsburg oil paints. Oh my gosh. No, they're I, like, it's like it, going to a candy store right now. Oh yeah. Golden, <laughs> um, Williamsburg oil paints and core watercolors. And then these are all paints that I got from, I did a big mural last year, um, at the, or the year before that, um, with Tracy Covey and, uh, at the airport and the guy who, Doss, who was next to us doing the other mural gave me all his leftover paints. Oh and, my gosh. Yeah. I've been painting with these and these are actually, they're in these tin, I mean, in these containers, but they're actually, uh, he used golden, um, mural paint. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. So they're all golden. Wow. Yeah. 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 So I have lots of, um, lots of product. Oh my yeah. goodness. So what this I do is like heaven for us. <laughs> yeah. I give, um, I give lecture demos around the state. Um, and also in, um, some places in Colorado and, uh, Wyoming and it's a two hour, it's a two hour free lecture about the, about the paints and, and the mediums and gels and you get a little goodie bag, but it's really great because it's all about the, um, about mediums the, and the, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also I think that they have that online too. They do. We are doing them online. Yeah, I do them in person and we are doing them online. Yeah, so there's about 40 of us around the country and um I I I give about 20 of them a year. So Wow. So I, you'll tell us later when you sit back down how you got all um involved in that, but let's talk about your artwork sure. right now. Okay. Okay. So I pulled these out. Um I thought you might want to see these um cuz doing this interview I've been uh, you know thinking back on what I've been doing. Um I don't know if you've ever heard of Lewis Noble, but he's an artist that is in the UK and he does these great, um, he does plain air painting, but, it, but it's, but it's more about responding to the, to the, uh, to the landscape and mark making. And I love it because I love it. Aren't they fun? So you don't, oh my even, gosh. you don't really even, the idea is to go out and respond to the essence of the landscape. Am I holding the camera okay? Can you see Yeah, that? perfect, perfect. So the idea, and I'm going to paraphrase him, so check him out on, on YouTube if you, don't, um, if you don't know him, but it, it's, the idea is responding to the, to the landscape, the energy of it. And what I love about it is that it's a way of seeing. And, and that's, I'm really interested in that. Like it's, you're looking at it and responding to the environment and mark making and not really thinking or worrying about whether it's an accurate landscape or that you, but, but it's more about the energy and the, and the marks. And I, it feels very organic. Yeah. And I found, but by doing these, um, I learned new marks and I might bring these back to the studio and, um, and then respond to these. And what, what he does is he'll, wow. I'll take these and then take them in a book and then collage. So these are cut up and collaged from, from the painting series. Oh, wow. I love that, Stacy. What a great exercise. Isn't that fun? And it's a great exercise. And then, you know, take this into your studio and then make, and see these marks that you're making and respond to those. It's, I love that. I love that. Even playing with the color, the palette, it's just, it looks very freeing to me. It is. And at the same time, they, there's, there's like, you can take a deep breath in there. Yeah, right. And then these, the palette changes like this was when I was at the beach in Florida. Oh my gosh. They're sandy. Wow. I, just, I can see that. Just, I was just at the, um, out at the beach and took my acrylics and paper out there and was just throwing it around. Isn't that fun? I love them. Love them. I think I need to do that. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, just to get loose, you know, and not to worry. And you're out in the, you know, right now it's hard to go like and sit in nature for me. If you can see my back, <laughs> yeah. I'm full of snow, but, um, oh, wow. That wow. crazy. That one got, I got a little carried away with that one. <laughs> but the energy is bouncing off the walls. I love that. Fun. So you want it, do you want to see this piece? Yes, please. Okay. I wanted everyone to see it because I've seen it, but, um, I'm going to yes. back because it's kind of big. So, and then we'll go in on it. So this is a piece that it's an actual dress from, um, the late 1800s. Um, actually an old boyfriend gave it to me. He was a boyfriend for a minute and, but I really like, that's liked okay. It. Cause he gave you this. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was, if you can see, I, I cut the dress in half. I just love the for, the format and the form of the dress and all of the all of the history that adornment and and how we dress ourselves, like how how it's all packed in there. And what I did was, it's it's collaged in the back um, with a book with a, it's all erotic poetry. So there's erotic, I, yeah, and then things that I've written. And then the taking the dress and I split it in half. It was so see-through anyway, but, and then used a medium to adhere it to the, to the panel. I think it's incredible. It Thanks. really like, you know, whatever you use, the mediums that you use to, you know, to glue it, mm -hmm. it just looks very much part of the painting. Oh, that's Which great. is very successful. Thanks. You know what I mean? Cause it, it doesn't look like it's a dress and then the painting and, and, um, when you can create that, it's a very successful um, painting. Thank you. It has a big wooden carved frame that goes around it. That's really. I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay. You want to go in the other studio? Yes. Um, I, I think we're going to go through. Um, well, go ahead. Do you want to see the piece that we're selling today? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's do that. I'm so excited, you guys. So, um, Stacy has been generous enough to donate this piece. We're asking $350 for Feeding America. Remember, 100% of the proceeds go to people in need. And um, today, more than ever, as you all know, we need to help um, as a community of artists and um, to help for our community at large. And, um, you know, if you feel like you want to help, and buy this incredible, beautiful painting, uh, please DM me or Stacy, and we'll let you know what you have to do in order to make it happen. But this can be yours today. Mm -hmm. And um, at the same time, you could be helping with 3,500 3, meals Indeed. if you purchase this. So um, let's keep it going. And, and hopefully one of you will DM me or Stacy and go from there. But it is spectacular. And I can't thank you enough for your generosity, for your generosity, Stacy. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, it's the least that I can do, and I'm super happy um, to help. This piece um, is collage and oil and cold wax on 300 pound watercolor paper, and what it is is it's floating off of the wall. If you can yeah, see, yeah, I love that. How did you float? What did you use on the back? I wanted. I love that these become an object, and what oh. I did piece of board and glued it onto the back put a hole in it and then the back is gessoed and then I just put that hole in there and see if I can get it back up while holding my phone and there we go I love it I love how it's floating I love all of it yeah oh. that's a landscape that I did as well so 300 um, pound paper. Do you use that a lot? Do you like that? I do. I love it. I love it because it's got so much texture. And um, and then when I gesso the board, I mean the paper, and then start building with oil and cold wax, it just, it becomes an object. I mean, sculpture is my background, so I kind of can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> so you do you always gesso your papers? Uh, not always, but... Um, I, it depends. Like these are, um, this is a piece I'm thinking, I just, I have things around that I'm just thinking about. Um, that's wax and paper. 
Um, wow. it, de it depends on what I'm doing with it. Um, there is, I did a couple of drawings in Krista's class that um, I do love the gesso on the paper. Like this is an arches paper. And then I, gesso I gessoed it and then used um, charcoal and medium on top of it. So I, I like how it becomes so substantial. Right. And, it, and the weight of it is, mm -hmm. is, like you said, it's substantial. And I, I love the texture and you can carve into it. You can sand. You can do so many things to it if it has gesso. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and it seals the paper, too, so that that um, that the pa that the paint can sit on top of that. Correct. So this is my um, there's my kitchen uh, this <laughs> is my office where um, I do all my computer stuff. And then I also store all, a lot of my um, things from Golden in here. I'm working on a, uh, a master class for uh, Art to Life. So I've got my kind of organized stuff in here. And then I do most of my torsos. I don't know if people know about my torsos, that it was a body of work that I that I used to make. I still make, but um, uh, I made the, the torsos in clay and and now I cast them in bronze and then the skirts are beaded. So um, this is my <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. This is this is my bead collection. Yes, we can see them. Can you see that? And yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Oh gosh. It is crazy, the amount. Yeah, well, to do these sculptures, like some of them, I'll show you here, some of them um, are five feet tall. Uh, they're, they're anywhere between 16 inches, like this piece. I don't know. Let's see this without the glare. There we go. Perfect. There's a the photograph. This is a 16 inch piece. And, um, and then this is a five foot piece. Uh, I, I love, is that crystals on the bottom? Yes. There's a, wow. there's one of these pieces, uh, lives at the Coda Gallery in Palm Desert right now with a hundred, 150 strands of crystals. It's, wow. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. So when I, when I buy beads for that, I have to really, really buy beads. I can't, you know, just buy a few. Right. Exactly. But here's so what this is your book, right? Yeah, this is a catalog that I put together at my show at the Trove Gallery in 2016. Um, it was, this is a piece that I made that, um, can you see that okay? Yep, perfect. Um, this is a piece that I made that I took my, uh, I've had a journal since I was 15, and I cut all of the, um, the journal into, I used a stamp, a flower stamp, and I cut the journal into flowers and then um, I dipped each one in wax and then sewed them onto a piece of canvas that's three feet. It's three feet round. Oh, and, my goodness. Yeah, this sold went to a client in Palm Desert. You can't see it very well. Wow. But it wow. A steel frame. Well, I can just imagine the texture if it has the wax on top. Um, the texture and you can you can't read but you know that there's a lot of dialogue in there exactly and it's very personal but you can't see it and then the writing becomes the writing becomes my mark right it just becomes very um you know it's part of the piece and right and because you have a lot of layers too um yeah. it has a history to it so I, I really love that piece and you can smell it because it's yeah. music you, I feel like you can touch it. You can feel it, you Def know? Definitely. Here, so that's a sample of the crystals. So, How heavy is that? Um, which piece? That oh, one. Oh, it's really heavy. It takes, I can't lift it by myself. I think wow. these are, let's see, these are all just different paintings. and um, But these catalogs are great to do, I, I think. They're, oh, I wanted to show you some other um sculptures that are in there there uh you know i think they ended up being twenty dollars a piece um but you, these are great to send to galleries there's some it's a, it's a great portfolio and um yeah. you know and and especially like if you have a good um as we always say make sure you always take good pictures of your artwork so then you can print a catalog like this Definitely. it's so worth it Definitely. And we can take such good pictures with our phone now. Right. Uh, it's so easy now. 
Yeah, don't you know? Yeah, for sure. These are some um, necklaces that because I have so many beads um, that I don't oh. use the torsos, but like, look, look at, at that. that. Oh my gosh. Look at these. Oh, I love that. that Where great? are those beads from? These are um, these are from Africa, and then there's also pearls and um, and turquoise. Um, I have beads and stainless. I mean stainless um, uh, sterling silver. There's um, these are from you know. And how can this not influence your painting too, right? Oh my uh, gosh! I just saw um, you had a portrait there with a woman with all this flowers and stuff, and I can see her like almost having that adorn her. Where did you see that? In your hallway, I believe. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that one actually has an earring on it. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. I just saw it briefly. You know, we just passed it, so we didn't talk about it. But now, um, you know, seeing the influence from this to that, I can see the sure. connection right away. Let's, what, do you, what do you think if we, um, if we sell one of the necklaces for... Oh, my gosh. To, yes. To help um, raise some money. What do you think about that? Oh, my God. Stacy, you're amazing. Yes. Whatever, you, whatever. That, you want to do I this? Love is, them. These are pearls. Um, wow. They're black pearls and white pearls. You pick one. Which one do you want to do? Well, let's um, bring a couple with you back there, back to where you're sitting down, and then we'll open up for questions and ask people what they like. And um, hopefully they'll buy, they'll buy it today. Okay. Um, and we'll make more, more money for Feeding America. Oh, my gosh. I absolutely love it. Love them all. It's hard to, it's hard to tell. You, you gotta, you're the artist. You choose a couple and bring them back. Let's and um, I would like to open um, uh, for questions and for people, but also to go back with you um, a little bit and finish your story because we don't know how you got into CBP. How you got involved? Oh my goodness! I know oh. <laughs> it goes on crazy. I think I need to come over. No, <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Oh my god! It's it, like it's uh, like Disneyland. <laughs> I know. Go to the look at these. They're bake light, and these from Pakistan. Pakistan. Oh my goodness! I know. I love those. I know seashells. These are um, fish vertebrae. Oh my gosh. Look at those sculptures. Look how sculptural those are. No, no, no. Those, those could translate into an abstract paint. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's an interesting, you know, it, 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 they, it's all connected. When people say like, aren't you doing that work anymore? It's all, it's all connected. Oh, Here's there you go. You were talking about yeah. so an actual earring. Wow. That sits on her. Cause I love that dimension. I love the he the headpiece that she has on. Isn't that fun? I love that. Like adornment. Like an adornment, exactly. Yeah. So you want to go back and talk? Yes. Let's go back and let's um, just, I want to know how, where was the transition for you to go into CVP and how did you become part of the team for CVP? Okay, so there we go. Um, so let's see, CVP. Um, well, I think that, let's see, I was thinking about this last night. Um, I started with Golden in 2017. And then, um, and then I've taken a couple of classes with Nicholas in live classes um, at Esalon. This was a year, years ago. And we kind of became friends. And he has a gallery up in Park City. Blah, 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 blah. So I was, uh, I, had, I was getting ready to go down to California. This was right before COVID hit. It was in uh, the end of February um, 2000, is that 2020? I was in, I was working at home and doing some painting and uh, he popped into my head and I sent him a text and I said, Hey, how about if I'm your materials paratrooper for CVP? And I got a text to him the next day and he said, yeah, great. And oh my so gosh, we talked, um, I did a little interview with him and Terry um, and I started with CVP that I was like, I have to go de deliver work. And I started um, cold turkey with them in 2020. And it's, oh. 
an amazing process because it's such, as you know, I mean, it's a, it's, it's such a, he's such a good person and great teacher and the team is really amazing. I've learned so much about myself, about my work, about working with people. Um, it's been, a, it's been an incredible experience. So we have a question sure. from someone. When you apply the paper to the plywood, and especially when you're working so large, how do you actually go on top of it so you don't have air bubbles? What do you use? How do you do it? Okay, so um, it's a great question. And um, one of the main things to think about is make sure you leave in yourself enough time. Don't be in a hurry to put it on um, because, um, it, and, and this paper is just inexpensive uh, mixed media paper. Um, what I do is I use a, um, a bowl scraper and um, which are, you know, a couple different sizes. Like what I do is I, I put a layer of the medium down and then I use these bowl scrapers. They're a couple, they come in a couple different sizes. Um, and I start from the inside out. So I just start mm. at so first of all, and then you make sure that it's kind of straight, obviously. And I like to have a little bit um, extra overhang. So I'm not trying to get it perfectly on there because that doesn't happen very well. Um, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm going from the inside out. And then I'm also putting a piece of like deli paper on top and using a brayer. Um, and what happens is the, the, the paper, the, the fibers take on the, the moisture and it becomes more pliable. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of work it. I mean, there's a few wrinkles in there, but there's so much paint on there. Right, I, exactly. I you to find it. <laughs> <laughs> so Jane is asking, who other than Krista have been some of your favorite teachers? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I took a, I took a workshop with um, uh, Allison Miller. Um, she's not on social media. And yeah, I don't I, know who that is. Yeah, she's not on, you can look her up. She, ha, she does have a website that um, I took a workshop from her about four years ago at Anderson Ranch. And she teaches there every couple of years. Um, and I... I adored the class and I'm, and I've taken a lot of workshops, um, but sh I adored the class because it was a lot like a, um, it was like a, it was like graduate school in five days. We did 15 paintings and the largest was 30 by 40. And um, she just, the way that, it, and we, and we had a three hour critique every day in the afternoon. So we, wow. it, that really pushed me. Um, so, and, and, and I, I like that pace, um, Lewis Noble online, um, of course, Nicholas Wilton, um, and I, and I've, I took CVP twice, um, the first year and the second year. And even, um, I, being a coach, I, I just keep learning so much, but, um, people are welcome to contact me on Instagram if you want. And if you have questions, like sometimes I have a hard time thinking off the top of my head that, yes. that I can give it some thought too. Um, because I, there, I do have, there's a lot of really good teachers out there. Yeah. I love that. And, um, if you had three tips or not three, but some tips for either emerging artists or established artists that, that have worked for you, that you w wish you would know at the time that you know now. Okay, um, let's see. One, believe in yourself. Two, believe in yourself. And three, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that um, I would say to learn to look at work and, and not be so concerned about mimicking work learn to work, look at work and, and go to the source. Like if there's an artist that you like, find out what their source is. Like when I say source, are they looking at landscapes? Are they looking at music? Are they, uh, you know, what, um, because I think that will help to like go deeper in your own work. Mm -hmm. Um, and to, and to trust that 
I would say that um, take workshops. Um, it's a really great way, but be discerning um, because especially with social media right now, it's really easy to compare yourself to the rest of the world. If I spend too much time on it, it's a great tool, but I, my voice stops. I can't tell mm -hmm. the difference between my voice and everybody else's. And, and I need that relationship with myself, with my work. So I would right. Um, and, uh, get a line of credit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is the name of the book that you mentioned earlier? Um, where you, you quoted the scratch. What was, uh, can I, can I go grab those books real yes, quick? Please. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. And that. also CVP, uh, what does it stand for? She's not there but it's the Creative Visionary Program from Nicholas Wilton. That's what it is. I've taken it and it's amazing. And I highly, highly recommend it because you get all these different coaches like Stacy. So I highly, highly recommend it. If you've never done it, it's coming up Eight. next year. Yeah, yeah. we're starting, um, CVP is starting, it, it runs March, April, and May. It's a 12 yep. week. Yep. Yeah. It is, it, you go deep and it's so good. And then you have access, it's online um, and it's a great team. But it, and the thing- You that, learn from everyone. I mean, okay. what I was surprised is like all the coaches and everyone who is invested in CVP, they're truly invested in, in your best, um, uh, for you to be your best version of yourself. And um, I think that if you're ready to take the plunge, um, go for it and do it because I love that. And one of the things that's really great about it, like when, when I first took it, I was, t I had a solo show in sculpture. I was like, I don't have, I don't have time to do this. Right. So what I did was I didn't even paint the first time. I just sat down with a glass of wine or a cup of tea and watched all the right. video. But exactly. You, you have access to the class for, for a full year as right. you know. And that's really key because um, because you can go back and revisit it and and a hundred percent. All right, let's go back to the books okay. and then the the um, necklaces and then we gotta go. Okay, Twyla Tharp. Is Twyla that, Tharp. Is that backwards? It's backwards, but we can read it. It's There's no Twyla, way around it. The creative habit. Learn it and use it for life. All right, just text that to me and I'm gonna include it in our little. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll just include it on this interview. Okay, so do you want to pick a necklace? Yes. Okay, guys, you get to choose. I don't, I don't know. If we're gonna send it. We're gonna send a picture with um with more details on it. Do you like this one? This one's pearls. Okay. Um. This or... is this is a smaller. These the, these are lapis, lapis Ooh. beads, and then glass flowers. Oh, I love that one. So that one would be a hundred. Okay. And this one would be two fifty. I'm just okay. I'm discounting those. Um, and then these would be three hundred each. And wow. this this one is um, uh, ceramic beads from Oaxaca, and then also African beads. I and absolutely love them. We're one, gonna put them in our story. Oh, you have one more. One oh. more. This one is the kitty. Oh, and it's love the kitty. Karofsky crystals. So I can sell one of them. Okay, so um, we are going to um, put one that you that we're gonna you and I were gonna choose. We're gonna put it up in our stories, and hopefully one of you will buy it. And again, um, if um, anyone out there is, is watching and want to buy this incredible art piece from Stacy, um, you would not only get an incredible um, piece of artwork for your collection, but you will be helping so many people that are in huge need. And um, so we can't wait to keep helping. Stacy. I can't thank you enough um, for being here, for being you, for being so authentic and for being so generous with your time and your teaching. So um, thank you so, so much. Sandra, thank you. I really appreciate it. It was super fun. I wish I could see everybody and say hi. But, I know. <laughs> um, and I will, you know, I will, we'll decide on which piece and I will yeah. put a picture of it on Perfect. my, on my Instagram. Perfect. Um, Stacy Phillips art. 
and um and that way you can see because it's a, it gets a little lost it's exactly little... exactly exactly yeah. so thank you all for being here for staying here for listening to all that stacy had to share with us today and we'll see you next week with krista harris i can't wait give her my love have a great I will. thank you thank you so so much bye-bye bye-bye